This podcast is made possible by supporters like you. Mahalo. And by Atlas Insurance Agency, Hawaii's largest professional agency, helping Hawaii navigate insurance solutions since 1929. More at atlasinsurance.com. Aloha my kako, welcome to a new episode of What School You Went? Start every conversation with that question. I'm Ron Mizutani, and today we're going to share the story of a young man who is committed to making Hawaii a better place, but making the most of each opportunity. I want to welcome Ron Lee Lakalaka to PBS Hawaii. Ron Lee, welcome to uh, PBS. How are you doing? Mahalo for having me. Hey, Thank good you, to Ron. have you, my friend. Before uh, we continue, like I ask every guest, mm-hmm. what school you went? School I went, um, I came from St. Patrick's Schools in Kamaki. That's where I went to elementary, middle school. From there, I went to Punahou Schools from seventh grade to senior year. Uh, from there, I uh, was able to have the opportunity to go to college and the university, uh, San Diego State University. And that's the last place I've uh, gone to school. But I plan to go to school, continue my education uh, to become a teacher. Right on, right on. But you are a Punahou boy, right. muffin oh, blue, yes, true sir. and true. The name Laka Laka is synonymous mm-hmm. with uh, with Punahou. How many how many brothers have had played there? I have two brothers that played there. So Stephen yep. and Cedric. Cedric. And then, of course, you uh, being your dad's namesake as well, Ron Lee Jr. Do you mm-hmm. go by Jr. or just? Some some guys, some of the men, older <laughs> men, call me Jr., but uh, usually it's Ron Lee. Uh, they usually call my dad Ron. Or to call me uh, Ronnie Boy, uh, because I'm the boy version of my dad. Of dad. Yeah. You're not a boy, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> For those in podcast land, this this young man is look like he could still strap it up and <laughs> and and hit somebody. You know, um, born and raised in Kali. Born and raised in Kali Valley. Uh-huh. Kali Valley. Kali Valley, and and uh, tell me about about childhood. Um, mm-hmm. You're growing up in Kali and. And, uh, you know, finding your way to Punahou eventually, but your younger years. Share with me. Yeah. Uh, for me, my parents, they came from uh, Kamaki, Pololo area. Uh, from there, they uh, they lived in housing, public housing, uh, the Pololo public housing. And that's where I kind of grew up from uh, one years old to, of course, from when I was born to I was about four years old. Uh, most of my earliest memories are though in Kalihi Valley. And so uh, growing up, moving to Kalihi Valley when I was four and just learning the ways of uh, what my parents have taught me, you know, coming from a very, you know, low-income housing and now finally getting a house. And I do remember my earliest memories in the house, uh, just kind of kind of being in a bigger world, kind of like being introduced to something bigger and just kind of running around in my house, uh, feeling the new carpet, Right, the new smelling carpet, the new smelling kitchen, living room, uh, and just having that, uh, that. Those were my earliest memories in my house. And uh, growing up in Cleve Valley, it's very humbling, uh, like humbling experience, especially in the valley. You know, because when you drive to Kalihi, you have to go through Kalihi Kai, Kalihi itself, and then you get into the valley. And so, the uh, I guess the view. Right, it's not very too 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 beautiful, but it's very green. Um, it's very, uh, you know, come from humble beginnings of, of that, and just kind of seeing all the mom and pop shops, you know, passing by all the b- small businesses, and uh, all the uh, you know many elementaries that we have. And so, um, I was you know very fortunate to be born and raised in Cali uh, Valley. It's a uh, if you know grew up in Cali as well, and proud of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, a lot of folks say, "Oh, Kalihi, what a tough, what a tough upbringing." Hey, true story. I used to get my quarter stolen from me all the time hey. on the way to a f- football practice uh, at Kalakaua. But at the same time, I'm proud of it, and and um, help shape the man I am today. Mm-hmm. What do you say to those who say, "Oh, you grew up in Kalihi," mm-hmm. and you say, "Yes, I did," mm-hmm. and you say it with pride? Do you? Yes, I do. You know, I have many friends that are also from Kalihi too, that also went to Punahou, uh, that I'm now today, that are still my friends and still my childhood friends. And so uh, to those who, to those I would say, you know, we come from we were the realness in us. You know, we're very, we're very real. Uh, we come, you know, from 
families that are still close to the till to, till this day, and we're able to still have these conversations together uh, ever since we were little and now growing up. Um, but having that connection, a Kalihi connection, they will always stay with you uh, because you know no matter where in the on the island, whether you're from town or the countryside, Kalihi sits right in that middle. You know, and so um, everybody's connected to Kalihi. And so that's that's the thing about it, the beauty of it, is because you see everyone around. And so I'm um, being connected to everybody. Totally agree. Totally agree. You know, I I ended up going to Kamehameha schools, but a lot, mm-hmm. of, a lot of my Kalihi brothers that I played ball with uh, went to Farrington. And uh, mm-hmm. in fact, uh, in a previous life, I, I was a quarterback when I was growing up. And my son became a quarterback later on. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Charlie Motoaului was my center. Mm. And Charlie went on to play for uh, Farrington High School and then the University of Hawaii yeah. in Manoa. And to this day, to this day, we're still buddies, mm. you know. And I get plenty of friends from Kali that still, we still call each other and we still talk story. We're still very close. So yeah. that will never change for you. Mm. But when you went to Punahou, mm. and that in itself, sometimes people say, oh, how. How, how, how did that happen? How did you guys transition to that? And again, it's it's about opportunities, but you, your parents instilled in you hard work from the day. Mm-hmm. It sounds like uh, right. just values and appreciation of, of what's what hard work can do. Just tell me about that. Yeah, so, uh, you know, having the opportunity to go to Punahou, I, I wouldn't have been able to have the opportunity without, of course, my parents and what I've seen uh, through my older brother. Yeah, and so... My older, my older brother and my younger brother were the first ones to get into Punahou. And so I was able to sit back and watch them, you know, go to Punahou, see how their lifestyle is, and see how they get organized, how they change, right, and change for the better and adapt. And I kind of seen that, you know, compared to what I, where I was at, St. Patrick's schools. And so um, seeing that social life that they have and uh, seeing their, uh, their changes, their, them growing up fast because going there, uh, it's really brought me to to open my eyes uh, to see that there are possible changes for me to grow and become a better person and become a better student and athlete and from there you know just my parents kind of instilling in both my older and younger brother the hard work and how much studying you have to do on an everyday basis with the college schedule even at a middle school even when you're in middle school and so uh when I was at St. Patrick's, every day was the same. I only had two classes. Uh, but they, you know, my brothers had many classes, mm-hmm. many t- different teachers. I only had, like, maybe one or two teachers. And so it's just knowing that they went through, you know, all these, you know, had to adapt to different people, and different culture, and then seeing how they became within one year. And then I was able to be so interested in that and wanting to, of course, be a part of that tradition and from there, you know, I had to, you know, I always wanted all my friends, are, you know, in Kalihi, they went to Farrington, like what you said, uh, or they either went to Kumehameha or Iolani, and not many of them were at, were at Punahou. And so I, I didn't really want to go to Punahou because I had friends that went other places. And now, but now I had my brothers there, it would be easier for my mom to come pick us up and drop us off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um... Stephen was an incredible mm. running back. Um, went on to play UH Manoa and and did very well as a, as a Rainbow Warrior. Brother went to San Diego State, mm. um, but then you came along mm. and you tore it up at Punahou. Um, but the Laka Laka name already had been quote established at Punahou. What was that like living up to that at, at Punahou? Yeah, that was probably the t- most toughest times of my my life, uh, just because. My brother, my brother Stephen, you know, set a standard that was very, very high. Uh, being that first child to come from Polo housing to to start a you know uh, a, a tradition, an education at Punahou, and not really having someone that he can look up to or or he could follow, and for him to kind of pave the way for me, and that was a uh, and the shoes that I had to fill that was very that was very big for me. That was very uh, challenging time in my life, but I was able to. Uh, but without that time, I was able to. I wouldn't have been able to grow, and be able to push myself and see what I could become. Um, so he's brought that vision in me, 
to to of course meet his standards and uh, to be a great student athlete and what it means to be a good student athlete, a good student on and off and as athlete of course on and off the field, um, how he treats teachers, how you speak to people around you who you don't know, and how to introduce yourself right and uh, make conversations. Those are the things I learned uh, growing up, seeing, watching him, and kind of following that. Nicely said, and the respect I can feel and, mm. and recognize that you have for Brother, uh, especially Stephen, who, who paved the way for both of you who came after. Um, but nothing is given. I mean, you had to work hard, uh, Ronley, and, and I know how hard you worked, um, mm. not just at Punahou, but, you know, the opportunity to take your your schooling as well as your athleticism to San Diego State mm. meant a lot to you too. Yeah. Tell me about that, that journey and, and the next step that you took to to uh, fill that dream. Yeah, my uh, of course I always right started following my older brother. Uh, he's paved the way at Punahou, and he wanted to pave the way at you at University of Hawaii uh, when Norm Chow was there. And uh, I know they were going through some some rough years. And uh, my brother, you know, I always wanted to be a Rainbow Warrior. I always wanted to be a Rainbow Warrior from at, from when I was really young, being a fan of Cope Brennan. Being a fan of uh, Leonard Peters and all those, you know, legends of Hawaii, and uh, uh, I wanted to follow in his footsteps. But you know, he's been able to spread knowledge to me and spread uh, wisdom to me that I think it's best for me to to go because of what he saw and what the future he's seen with where he was at. And so, um, being able to take those words and take my talents and my 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 work to San Diego State from there and. Uh, that's kind of how my journey began and my athletic career there and my yeah my life you um you had the chance or uh to actually play not against brother but mm. against brother yeah mm. um and i know one one of those games a whole bunch of your family guys flew up to san diego state yeah. what was that like i know steven probably mm. wouldn't want you to talk about it but because we got cracks, we Hawaii. Yeah. Um, but um, <laughs> that must have been a special night for the Laka Laka Ohana. Oh, of course, you know, leading up to the game, uh, just knowing that I already kind of know that what, what was coming. Last time I've seen my brother on the field was when I was a freshman at Punahou, and and before this time, freshmen weren't able to play uh, in the ILH level, varsity level, right. and so uh, when I got moved up from, I guess, the practice squad in high school. For Punahou, I was able to go against him, and um, from there, I was not developed at that time, and I and I had a rough time going against him. He's always been he was always scoring in practice on me or my teammates, my friends, and so when I had the the chance to to know that I'm going to be playing him, it was like oh now I get to now I'm all grown. I have I have muscle now, I have more knowledge of the game now. And now I'm a linebacker, and he's a running back, and so I've always wanted that that matchup to come back because he had the best of me when I was a freshman in high school. You got the best of him, that <laughs> yeah, fifty-five nothing, I think was the final. Mm. Mm, yeah. yeah, but uh, bragging rights, mm. rest of your life, you were the last man standing that night at least. You know, I know um, you have fond memories of being an Aztec. Um, mm. uh, Lots of responsibility with that too. When you look back at, at all that you had accomplished as a young man growing up in Palolo, Kalili, Kalihi, rather, and then Punahou, and then now here you are at San Diego State on the brink of a prof- pot- potential professional career, mm-hmm. what was running through your head during those times? Yeah, what was running through my head through, that, through, those, through those times is uh, all those all the past memories that we just talked about. Um, being able to play the game at a high level and, you know, being fortunate enough to to also play f- and come from Hawaii and uh, and play somewhere else that is away from Hawaii and, uh, you know, seeing that my, my first time traveling, you know, and it was one of my few places that I've uh, that I visited, you know, in San Diego. And so San Diego was very new to me and it was very beautiful. Um, you know that beginning my journey there it was uh, they were going off a rough te- tough season rough season and I knew it was going to be challenging from the beginning um, but what made it so fun uh, was when 
uh, my junior year is when my younger brother got to join the team. And so that that's what made it more meaningful in my journey to be there. Mm -hmm. And I planned to stay there. I was uh, thinking about coming back home because I missed home so much after my sophomore year. But then uh, my brother joined me at, at San Diego State, and I, I, of course, I had to stay. The um, the NFL called mm. and invited you to camp. What was that mm. like? And, you know, that, that wasn't your final mm. stop. I know you stopped in the CFL as well. Mm. And, and probably, could, I understand you still had an opportunity to mm. play, even yeah. right now. Mm, right. Um, take us back to the NFL, though. Yeah, just getting the, um, you know, going through that whole process, it was very, you know, new to me because... You know, for me, I always followed my older brother, right? And my older brother didn't get the opportunity because uh, he tore his ACL on his last game uh, in the Hawaii Bowl. And so um, this is kind of my first time or part of our first time as a family kind of going through that professional experience, uh, going through that whole process. And so, uh, of course, speaking to different, you know, agents, different people, and you don't know who to trust. Um, you know, there's there are people out there that want, what's best for you and those people who want what's best for them. And I had to, you know, pray about it and be with my parents, uh, introduce them to the other agents that are interested in me. And they, of course, have to create that relationship with them. And we went with uh, an agent who actually gave us an opportunity right, to go to these mini camps that I was able to attend. And um, going to these new cities now, right, since we coming from Hawaii to San Diego and now going to a place like uh, New York, you know, this it's like uh, eye opening, um, and from there, you know, just kind of experiencing what it's like to be a young professional, um, and then uh, making my way to to Canada, of course, uh, you know, and just having that, you know, ability to travel. I think that was the main thing for me, and to be able to see new things and to discover new things, and uh, yeah. But here you are today, and again. Just by looking at you, brother, I know you, you could probably still go. And the UFL, you know, the new league and everything else mm -hmm. has called you mm -hmm. to. But at this time in your life, you're saying it's time to give back. Mm -hmm. Why is that important to you? Yeah. And so with, you know, being able to have the experience, um, you know, getting injured in my experience of football, I was able to come back home. And from at home, I was able to work in the Hawaii State Capitol uh, get to experience, get my feet wet, kind of like see how it's like to be working in, you know, a field of that I've graduated in, um, you know, political science. And so uh, I was able to get to the legislative session and get to experience the process and all of everything. And I fell in love with um, the way that the community is very involved with the legislature and how, how much passion it comes in, whether it's creating testimony um, being able to speak their voice, and so that's what really drew me in and tied me into the, hey, like oh, this might be, this might be the time to to come back home and to um, create those relationships here and uh, be rooted back in Hawaii. I like that. I love that actually. I want to revisit that, but mm. there's also a different side of you that you know you want to get back to education and 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 mm. special education in particular. Right. And I know you're working over at Farrington, yes. giving back that way as well. Why? Mm. Why? Well, you know, you could probably do whatever you want at this point, but but why that route? I seen, uh, you know, that I was able that I was part of these different communities when I was working in the Hawaii State Legislature, uh, whether it was working with uh, Senator Kurt Vivella in Evo Beach, uh, Representative Jackson Sayama of Kamaki, and Representative um, Della Della Albalari of uh, Makiki area. And so I was able to work in these different communities, and I kind of felt like, hey, like, I know it's not Kalihi Valley. It's not Kalihi, and it's not people that I have grew up with, that I've been familiar with. But being able to work in those communities and learn from them, you know, the value of giving, giving back to your community. I wanted to come back to my own community and see what ways I can do to contribute my knowledge and everything. And so that's when I kind of found that teaching was 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 the segue to to then uh, come back to my community and give back to these kids here in Kalihi Valley, Kalihi area. Farrington is a special mm -hmm. place for you because that's, I mean, if Punahou didn't come calling, that may have been home for you too. Right. Yeah. Um, but you're not done there. I know. Mm -hmm. I know you have 
There's a lot of folks that have big plans for you, Runley, mm -hmm. and, and you yourself have dreams that you still have to realize. Yeah. You've achieved a lot of success in everything that you've pursued. Mm -hmm. What do you see yourself, mm -hmm. say, in five years? Where do you mm -hmm. see yourself? I see myself in five years uh, giving more of myself to the community, uh, whether it's now having my teacher's license and now being certified to be able to stay there and complete my goal of going to school and getting my teaching license to, to then teach, continue teaching. And, of course, uh, being more a part of the community level as well, as whether that's uh, joining the neighborhood board. Um, you know, I was able to... I'll run for the neighborhood board this past year, and uh, being able to do that was a very good experience. And I uh, wanted to be more a part of that, uh, those meetings and being a part of the change that you can, we can have in Kalihi Valley, Kalihi area. And, you know, uh, just, I guess, being able to um, find more of that passion in me and, uh, and kind of emptying that out onto my community. Politician. <laughs> oh, not yet. Maybe not yet. Not yet. It's not. I've, I, I wouldn't want to say that yet, um, because you know. You know what? I I know that. Makes, <laughs> you know, I, I had Augie T up here uh, yeah. one day. Augie, and many many years ago, Augie on the radio. I I was talking story with him. I was a guest on his on his show, mm. and he said, off air, he said, ah, I'm gonna run for office. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, whatever. Today, he's a councilman, mm. right? And but he's not a politician, and he'll be the first to tell you that. He's a servant mm -hmm. of the community, and I believe that he has, he's serving with the right heart. Mm. I see that as what you would be, right. not a politician, right. <laughs> but yeah. a servant. Yeah, I have uh, written on, that, on the paper my, um, my title, and I'm like, wait, I'm a coach. I'm a teacher. I've served the community. So you put that all together, it's community servant. And so um, that's that's what the title is, and I've learned that from um, my own legislators that I've worked for, like Kurt Fivella and Jackson Sayama. You know, they've really, they've really uh, stressed that word, community servant. You've had uh, you've had some good mentors up, mm. up in the Capitol, um, which can be chaotic at times, and I'm sure you saw yeah. all of the things that uh, that happened in the Square Building, as we call it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know the polit the political movements that go on in there, but you've you've been exposed to some three those three names right there are mm -hmm. very special, mm -hmm. and they represent you know communities that that ha need representation. Right. Um, a yeah. couple more questions, Ronley. You know your your background, your upbringing, you know your heritage, your your culture. Mm -hmm. How much of that is a part of you know? Being productive and, right. and and sending a message to the young yeah. Polynesian community that hey, work hard mm. and you can achieve great things. Yeah, and, um, being a part of that Polynesian culture, one of the main components is going to church. Uh, whether it's being a, you know, going to church on Sundays, and so going to church on Sundays for me and my family really helped us be grounded. Really helped us uh, be within ourselves and really reflect on who we are and who we will become and who we want to be when we grow up. And learning a lot of that from church at St. Augustine's by the Sea Catholic Church with our pastor, Father Lane, uh, Lane Akiona. And so he's taught many lessons and taught many many of these valuable lessons to us who are, who are, who was also our pastor back in St. Patrick's. And so having him, not only our school pastor, but our community pastor as well, um, that's really made us consistent to where we have to be grounded and uh, and from there, it's really helped, you know, um, take that with us, right, to to now the real life and life outside of church and into the real world. Um, and that's really helped, you know, us as a family um, to stay grounded and as Polynesian people as well. You miss hitting people? <laughs> I, I, I do. I do. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a funny question because I think about it every day. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, seeing... Because I'm a coach and a teacher, and I see, uh, I'll watch, you know, some NFL, and uh, I watch high school games, and it makes me want to go back and play more. But you know, when that, you know, when it's time, when you kind of see that, you know, life away from football is also growing. Uh, that's where that's where you gotta plant those roots, and you gotta make sure that that those roots are growing as well. And 
I think it's for my uh, for my playing career. It's reached the maximum level. It's reached its uh, it's reached its place, and I feel like in this other right plant that I'm growing, it can go. It can go even. It can grow even more. So wonderfully said, beautifully said, young mm. man. Uh, remember the name, mm. Ronley Laka Laka. Um, not a politician, mm. but a servant who will always have that servant heart. Right. And uh, thanks to mom and dad for instilling that in you and your brothers mm. for being a part of that as well. It was a pleasure talking story with you, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. I wish you the very best. Please know that you have a friend here mm-hmm. and um, as well as somebody who respects you and your family deeply and, and PBS Hawaii is pulling for you. And, and um, yeah, I see great things sitting across from me right now. Thank you for The future me. is in good hands when you have young men like you and women who uh, strive to be the best that they can be and make a difference in the community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Those aren't just words, you're living it. Right. Congratulations. Thank you. Right on. Mahalo Nui for joining us, folks. Join us next week, another episode. Never know who's going to come join us on What School You Went. Until then, all we hope. What School You Went is a PBS Hawaii production. Music by Taimane Gardner. If you enjoyed this episode, let us know on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and tell your friends. You can find us on pbshawaii.org and everywhere you get your podcasts.